Hi, this is Terry Cuti with Deep Sea Foundation. I am very honored today to be with Dr. Rishi Sahani, who is a medical oncologist who practices in Pleasanton, California. Welcome, Dr. Sahani. Thank you, Terry. So what we're gonna talk about today, if you could help us dissect a very hot topic in breast cancer recently, which is a Taylor RX score. If you can help us understand it, why the study was done, and just give us some, some of your insight. Oh yeah, absolutely. Thank you for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. I think for our field in breast cancer, Taylor RX was a very important study. It was presented at our annual meeting in Chicago this year. Right, and at was also published uh, at the, in the New England Journal of Medicine. Mm -hmm. And what this study was trying to do was answer a very important question. So 10,000 patients were, um, were enrolled in the study. And uh, these patients were women with early stage breast cancer mm -hmm. that was lymph node negative, estrogen and progesterone receptor positive, and HER2 negative. These group of women went through a test called an Oncotype DX, a genomic profiling test, mm -hmm. that then classified them into different risk groups. And the question was, is, is in patients who were in the low risk group, which is for this study defined as less than 10, Th that they would not need chemotherapy. The so, high risk. So the Onco DX was at less than ten. Less than okay. the recurrence score was less than ten. Those mm -hmm. who were above twenty six mm -hmm. would be offered chemotherapy because this would be classified as the high recurrence risk group. And then for patients between eleven and twenty six, the question was: Is this, would these patients benefit from chemotherapy or not? This is a clinical question that's dogged patients and physicians for a while, and that's what this study was trying to help mm -hmm. figure out. And what this study showed was is, is that in this group of intermediate risk score patients, that those who were randomly assigned to either chemotherapy with endocrine therapy mm -hmm. or endocrine therapy alone, that at the end of this study, that their overall survival, their invasive disease-free survival, and even their distant disease-free survival, all these three endpoints that their survivals were similar, and hence those patients who were on chemotherapy with endocrine therapy did not necessarily derive a significant benefit from chemotherapy. Ah, okay. So this is certainly practice changing for us. Mm -hmm. The difference in this study vis-a-vis -vis how this Oncotype DX test was previously clinically approved is that up to 18 would be considered low risk. Mm -hmm. 18 to 31 would be considered intermediate risk score and 32 and above is high risk. Yes. The reason, so this has you know, led to some confusion mm -hmm. in, 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 you know, members in the field. And the reason for that was is, is in this study, the low risk group would not be offered chemotherapy. In okay. clinical practice, are there some patients who still want chemotherapy? They understand the risks and benefits, yes. But as part of participating in this study, they would not get chemotherapy. I see. So to for being extra cautious, the categories were moved a little bit to the left of the scale, as we would uh, say. And that's where the numbers shifted mm -hmm. from 25 or from 31 to 25 then exactly so okay. that the other thing in this study was that there was a uh, uh, exploratory analysis mm -hmm. that did show that women who are under age 50 yeah. meaning premenopausal women with a recurrence score of 16 and above may get may derive some additional benefit from chemotherapy Though the debate is whether that was truly because of chemotherapy or the fact that chemotherapy actually put these women in premature menopause. Exactly. And we have a lot of data that has shown that when ovarian function is suppressed, mm -hmm. women go into premature menopause and stay in that longer, they derive more risk reduction or more benefit. Mm. So the jury is still out, but that was something that I would like to mention because that was a result that showed that younger women may benefit from it. Yeah. So, you know, I think this is the progression generally of how studies go to, you know, improve the care for patients. What do you think is next? Well, I think the next is is, is a further confirmation of that uh, exploratory analysis. I Are see. there truly some women 
as in premenopausal women who even though may have this type of a tumor that's lymph node negative smaller um, estrogen receptor positive could they benefit from chemotherapy mm -hmm. so I think confirming that and truly showing that chemotherapy is beneficial is going to be important so that's the next step okay Dr. Sahani, that was such a good explanation. I think that sometimes when these studies come out and the headlines that come out, people don't read beyond the headlines. They don't dive into the study. So I really appreciate your time today and helping us understand the Taylor um, RX just a little bit better today. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for this opportunity. Absolutely.